Today, we're making ice cream sandwiches. But with a twist. All right, before we jump into this recipe, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can see all of our videos. I'm Chef Jordan and I'm joined here with Chef Rachel. We're gonna be making ice cream sandwiches today from our 22nd edition of Flavor Forecast. Yeah, and if you don't know, McCormick puts out the flavor forecast every year. It's something we've been doing for the last 22 years, and we are super passionate about. We spend the whole year diving into trends, both on the internet and going out to restaurants and really exploring what's happening in food, and then presenting it in this forecast with all different recipes of the top trends we're seeing in the industry and from food bloggers and all around the landscape. Today we're gonna to be making a really tasty ice cream sandwich but we want to elevate it a little bit. So I heard today's trend's called Plus Sweet. What does that mean? Yeah, so what we've really been seeing over the past year is kind of an evolution of sweet. So you think of desserts and you think of sugar. And what we're really seeing is people weaving flavors into their desserts. So, and not just desserts even, like I saw somebody making a strawberry jam with chicken the other day, you know, really combining all sorts of flavors with sweet being an additive rather than the star. So we're making this ice cream sandwich today that's packed full of kind of unexpected flavors, but it's going to be really delicious. So I don't see any eggs. I don't know how to make ice cream without eggs. So what are we doing over here? All right, so we took the egg yolks out of this basic custard recipe to allow our other flavors to kind of stand out a little more. You know, the fat from the egg yolk really has a tendency to coat your mouth and kind of block other flavors from coming through. So instead of that, we're going to thicken our ice cream by making a little cornstarch slurry. Oh my, I've never made ice cream with cornstarch. I'm super pumped to learn something right now. This is awesome. Yeah, so if you've ever made like a asian -y sauce that's thickened with yeah. cornstarch, you always have to make a slurry so that the starch granules are coated in the liquid and they don't just clump up when you add them yes. to your super warm liquid. Important step. Super important step. So we're just gonna whisk this together for a bit and then we'll set it aside. And then you're gonna start making our cream. All right, I guess I'm gonna go make a base like I used to know, but we're gonna use Rachel's cool little shortcut here. So I have a pot. We have about uh, two cups of heavy cream here. We're gonna add that to the pot. I know one thing when I make ice cream, I always be super careful not to burn or scald the cream or milk. To this pot, we're gonna add some honey. Because again, like Rachel said, we're really not going for just sugar. We want a little flavor too. And I think the honey, right? Yeah, it's gonna is... add some nice floral notes. Sure. And again, because it's not straight white sugar, it's not gonna be so sweet. And sweet and condensed milk because I can't eat ice cream without it. Again, we gotta stay a little bit in my comfort zone here. I'm yeah, like, we'll make Jordan neophobe. happy in some ways. <laughs> not all the ways, just some of them. All right, so we got sweet condensed milk, we got honey and we got our heavy cream. Yeah. Give that a gentle little mix. But one thing I always add to ice cream, and this is something that I can't make ice cream without is salt. I don't know what it is about salt, but it kind of just elevates the vanilla. Ooh, it adds and, a little to the sweet. Yeah. And so it brings out all the other flavors. That's what the magical thing about salt is to me. It's not even really a flavor, but it elevates everything else. So that's gonna bring out our pepper. It's gonna bring out the honey notes. It's gonna bring out the smoke. Yeah. And it's gonna help everything really come together. After I get my salt in, I turn that heat up. We wanna go medium flame on this. Again, I don't wanna scald my cream, but I also don't wanna bring it to a boil because I feel like you can curdle it pretty easily. Yes. So we're gonna super gently, we're gonna constantly mix, make sure that honey's dissolved because that's one thing when cooking with honey, right? Kind of wants to clump at the bottom. When do we add this cornstarch? So we need this liquid to be hot. If we just added this cornstarch into it, it's gonna sink to the bottom just like it is in our cold cream, gotcha. right? So once this is warm, it's gonna activate those starch molecules and it's gonna start to thicken up. It'll take a couple minutes, but we're looking for something that coats the back of the spoon. Gotcha. So we're, we're pretty much playing by the same rules that we would if we were cooking. Yeah. A stir fry or a sauce. So, all right, I'm, I'm feeling comfortable. I'm feeling like I could attack this. I'm so yeah, glad you feel comfortable, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I got liquid smoke, black pepper, and cornstarch. I, I'm, I'm out of my, my realm. It's gonna be it. good. Don't it's worry about fun. it. <laughs> All right, so we see our steam and we're just gonna slowly whisk in our cornstarch mixture. Wow, this is so much easier than using eggs too because eggs you'd have to worry about tempering the yolks. Exactly. It's actually very, this is way easier. I don't know why I haven't done this sooner. We're looking for that nappe, that coating of the spoon where you run your finger through it and it doesn't bleed. So we're just gonna stir this for about three to five minutes until it's thickened. So I can feel this thickening. I would almost think it's ready. What do you think, Rach? I mean, what's like the best test for this kind of mixture? We're gonna dip our spoon in. Oh. And then 
we're going to run our finger down it. And we're looking for it to not drip. So I think we're there. Looks solid. All right. It's a little less risky since we're using cornstarch. You want to put that over there? Yeah. We're just going to put it in here. And we just want to make sure there's no lumpy lumps. But I think we're pretty good. I think I did a good job staring. I'm not. I think you nailed it, Jordan. I can tell you've more. made ice cream before. <laughs> so we're going to let this cool for a while. And then we're going to add our flavor. Cool. All right, Jordan, we've got our cold ice cream base. So this is where I would just throw it in a machine because I'm such a wimp. So you didn't even put the vanilla in yet. <laughs> I know. but <laughs> So we're going to start with some liquid smoke. We're really she's, getting out there. She's testing the waters right now with me. <laughs> then liquid smoke and ice cream. What else you got? We've got some coarse ground black pepper because we want, you know, a little pop every so oh. often in this ice cream. And we're adding a decent amount of this black pepper in here. I know, sounds like a lot. But because the ice cream's cold, it's gonna dilute our flavors overall, right? So like, if it was hot, it'd be really spicy and you wouldn't, you really wouldn't like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm liking this touch of the fresh pepper as opposed to like cooked black pepper. When you said pepper before, I was like, cooked black pepper and ice cream, but I see where you're going with this. I like it, I'm liking it. I'm actually not as scared of it. I'm so it's glad like, yeah. your fear <laughs> is leaving. And put in some vanilla. I love it. One more for us. There you go. Oh. There you go. Oh, wait. <laughs> right, now that we've got all of our flavors in here and we're ready to start churning our ice cream. All right. So remember, when making ice cream, always follow your manufacturer's instructions. For this one, you want to have a frozen ice cream bowl for the churning. Now keep in mind, we have a cold base and a cold bowl. It's going to help speed up the process of making ice cream. Exactly. So. We wouldn't want this base to still be hot because it would start warming up our frozen bowl. All right. Cool. So we're turning our ice cream today so that we develop nice small ice crystals, right? Like if we were to put this recipe directly into the freezer, it's gonna be a giant block and icy and gritty. But with the churning method, we're gonna develop really small ice crystals as well as add some volume, some air to it. So it's gonna be nice and creamy and delicious in texture. So if you don't have an ice cream machine, don't worry. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. You can also buy vanilla ice cream in a store, right? And hook it up with some black pep and a little bit of liquid smoke and make it your own. Yeah, so let's get going. Cool, let's churn it up. So we're gonna put our churner on the... Get ready for the noise. Are we ready? Ready, I'm ready. Okay. So now we're gonna let this go until it's thick but not frozen solid. And then we're gonna transfer it into its own container. A fancy container. So while your ice cream's freezing in the freezer, we gotta make the sandwich for the ice cream sandwich. Yeah, again, we're gonna step out of your comfort zone. We're not gonna use a cookie. Ah. We're gonna cake. We're gonna make some scones. Oh, all right. And we're gonna we'll add a little funky there. flavors to the scones too. Come on, can't we just go like just a scone with a little? No, no. Right. We're out of the box all right, today. All right. <laughs> all right. So we're gonna start our scones with all-purpose flour and yeah. cake flour. Love that. And now all-purpose flour has your standard amount of protein and gluten and all that jazz. And then we're gonna do half cake flour, which has less protein, mm. less gluten. So it's gonna not form so many pockets. It's gonna be nice and cakey, our scones at and the end of the like, day. Kind of not make it as dense or chewy. Yeah, also, right? exactly. Okay. It's gonna make it nice, a nice crumb, a tender crumb is what we're looking for. So then we're gonna add a little sugar, not too much, okay. not too much sugar. Stones need sugar. Stones need sugar. We're still sweet, you know. Still we're sweet. not. Still we're sweet. not getting totally away from that. I'm waiting for the curveball. I'm waiting for you to be like, in. Yeah. We'll get there. Don't worry. <laughs> and next, we're gonna do a little baking soda and a little baking powder. All right. Now we're getting funky. Now we're getting scared. All Here right. We so we're gonna do. Some extra black pepper. Again, we want to complement the flavors of our ice cream. And we also have a secret ingredient that this is going to complement too. Now we're going to add a little salt. Like we said before, we got to elevate all our flavors. So salt is always a key. Still feel good. This isn't that scary yet. Okay, we'll see what all you right. feel with the next thing. Okay. I knew it. I knew it. Next, we're going to add some rosemary. I like me some rosemary. All right, so we're going to have some floral notes from here, some pininess that's really gonna complement that black pepper. And because we're putting it in a food processor, we're not gonna need to crush it. But if you were gonna do this by hand, you would wanna crush this a little. And you can do that just with putting it in a plastic bag and hitting it with a rolling pin or pan or something. They're just pretty spiky. So we wanna crush that up a bit. Oh. 
All right. It's great, by the way. I mean, it's got, right? you could immediately, like the pepper and rosemary, just first thing that kind of blows up at you. Love it. So now we're just going to pulse these together. If I can get this on. <laughs> Twist. And got to line them. Okay. Ready? Ready. All right. Pulse it up. So we're just looking to get our ingredients blended here. Nice. Next, we're going to add some very cold butter. That we don't have out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cold butter. All right, Jordan, why do we have to keep the butter so cold? Anytime you're making a pie dough, biscuit, scone, you need the butter to be super cold. This is what allows you, when you cut that butter in, as they call it, that's what gives you the flake. That's honestly where a lot of the great texture comes from in a scone. So if you don't have a food processor, no worries. You can use a fork to cut this butter in. Just make sure you work fast, because again, the goal is to keep the butter cold. Like you said, we're gonna cut this in here, but because it's a scone, we want a crumbly texture at the end of the day. So unlike biscuits or pie crust, we're gonna blend this butter a bit more than you would normally. All right, so we're looking for that wet sand kind of texture, right? Looks good to me. I mean, that looks like wet, damp sand. I think so too. And you know, if we were making pie crust or biscuits, you'd want the pieces to be a little bit bigger, maybe pea size. So you get that nice flakiness. So you get the flake, right. All right. So now we're going to add our moisture. Yeah, this is where it always gets interesting because everybody makes scones so differently. So what I do we know. got there? We got some heavy cream. We've got some heavy cream. Yeah. And we're also going to add some sour cream. This is what I've been wondering since we got here. Like, why is there sour cream out? So I love sour cream and baked goods. It adds a really nice tanginess and moisture that you don't get without it. And so these are going to keep our scones nice and moist. They won't be dry. And add a little zing to the final love scone. Go. Cool. All right. So we want to take this until it just comes together. Gotcha. If we blend it too much, the dough is going to get tight. We're going to develop too much gluten, so we don't want to do that. So we're going to pulse it together. Cool. All right, here we go. All right, so we're just going to pinch a little bit. And you see how it sticks together like that? I think we're done. So we're using some parchment to be a little less messy, but you're going to get nice and messy, Jordan. All right, let's do this. All right, so we're going to try and form this into a nice little rectangle. Oh, it smells so good. You smell butter, rosemary, black pepper. I mean, it smells awesome. So when I make scones, I typically use my parchment just to kind of keep the corners up. Now, I don't want to use my hands when I'm patting this down because the heat from my hands will start to melt this butter. So I am just going to use a little bit of a rolling pin. Now, again, we want this to be an inch thick because I don't know, typically when I make ice cream sandwiches, I like a thick cookie or whatever. Now, I always use my finger and I actually measured that, and it's a perfect inch, that line on my finger. So I always use that as my measure. And that's about an inch. That's pretty good. I, Nailed it. <laughs> All right. So for the scones, we're just going to take a three-inch cookie cutter. We're going to cut out about six of these. And you can take the scraps and bundle them back up and uh, rework them. And those go on. And that looks gorgeous. That looks really nice. But like you said about the heat from your hands, you don't want to mix the dough together. Like, you just want to kind of push it together. Get it. So you're not melting that butter and mixing it all too much. Right, so typically when I make scones, I brush them, egg wash, heavy cream, a little buttermilk. What are we gonna use today? Cause I know you love to just funk it up a little bit. So. All right, so we're gonna use a little heavy cream. Okay. And then to really continue on our plus sweet trend, we're gonna mix a little salt and sugar together. And we're gonna sprinkle that on top of our scones. Salt's so really gonna enhance any flavor that you add it to, so you don't need a whole lot, but it will add some nice elevation to your overall flavor profile, right? Gotcha. All right, you wanna do the sprinkling? Yeah, soft sprinkles. All right. A little salt and sugars. So we're sprinkling the salt and sugar on top after the cream. Yeah, so the cream is not only gonna give us some shine to our biscuits, but it's gonna help the salt and sugar adhere as well. Gotcha, I'm excited. A little sweet and salty on a scone, you can't beat that. So I think we're ready to pop these into our 375 degree yeah. oven. So how long do you think these are gonna take? These are thick boys. I mean, these are some thick scones. Uh, about 20 to 25 minutes, okay. but every oven's different. So when they're golden brown and look baked through, okay. pull them. Cool, all right, let's go. So our scones are cool. 
Our ice cream is ready. That means we it's time to make the sandwiches. I'm scared and excited all at once. So let's, let's do it. Let's do this. I mean, this is awesome. I love the fact that we're using scones because now I get to cut them in half. All right, be careful because of that cake flour, they're going to be nice and crumbly. Oh, wow, look at that. Beautiful. See the rosemary. That's awesome. All right, I'm going to cut you, Phil. All right, so we're going to scoop our ice cream. Nice big old scoop on wow. here. I'm excited. Oh, my God. So you got the rosemary, the smoke, the black pepper. A little vanilla because we're still vanilla. sweet. You get this nice big one, uh, Jordan. Yeah, because I'm a big boy. I'm a yeah. growing boy. That's what my mommy tells me. So. Okay, let's see if we got you out uh, of the just vanilla rut. That's intense, dude. Look at the size of that. All I right. like it. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Let's see. I don't even know if I could fit this in no, my mouth. No, but... Let's go. It's good. Mm. It's real good. It's like not too rosemary. You get a little bit of that smoke, a little bit of that black pepper. I took way too big of a bite. <laughs> you did. Look at this difference in size, by the way. Look at that. She took a, a mammoth bite, and I took a mouse bite. I wasn't afraid. I was trying to show some decorum, but we're going for it. Ah. Do it. It's okay to do it. It's so good, though. Oh, good. Yeah, you get it. It's still oh. sweet, you know? Mm. But it has all of those other flavors. It's got a hint of yeah. heat. It's got that nice pininess from the rosemary. Like That's good. Right? Surprised how much of the smoke comes through. Yeah, Good. but not as not terrible because yeah. again the ice cream is gonna tone down yeah. all of our flavors. So did I win you over, Jordan? You did. You did. You made me a gentleman. I feel like I've grown up. All right. Uh, I was a little kid walking into this liking vanilla and cookie, and this is just like an elevated, super flavorful, super complex though. I love it. I really do. I, I would eat this all day. Pepper and sweet, it works. Who knew? Yeah. Yay! I'm so glad you like it. Loving it. If you enjoyed today's recipe, please give this video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the McCormick Spice YouTube channel. And for more on the 22nd edition of McCormick's Flavor Forecast, click on the link in the description box below to discover all of this year's trends and recipes. Get in there, man. There you go. <laughs> Amanda, this one's for you.